mechanical work all right so what is this work and how can we actually calculate it when you are introducing yourself to this concept in physics you're not gonna find that the definition is very difficult so in short so this work or mechanical work because we're working on an object is basically thought of as the force which is being um, kind of applied on an object and that force displaces okay that particular object a certain amount of distance so if you're thinking about this just kind of in general terms if you have an object so let's say here it is okay so here's our object and then you have a force and this particular force you can assume that it's the net force that you have so that will be the force that is applied. And now force is still a vector for us. And then you can imagine that this particular actual object is being displaced. And let's say it is displaced, you know, this amount. So this would have been our displacement. So, so long as you're gonna be applying a force that will be displacing, okay, these, this particular object a certain amount, then you are uh, capable of calculating this mechanical work. Now, as you can see here, so the work in terms of the equation itself is defined right there in terms of the magnitude of the force multiplied by the actual displacement of this. Now, we very often in the beginning will assume that the actual force and the displacement are exactly in the same direction. So we're gonna be assuming that this force that you're applying is gonna be exactly in the same direction as the displacement that you have caused. And when you multiply these two, so we may drop these magnitude symbols, so these are just absolute values with regards to our force or just simply magnitude symbols in general. So you can drop them and you'll just see this as force multiplied by the displacement. And it's not very difficult for us to be able to calculate this. So if you can think of that this force, let's say, was 25 newtons, so it's a constant force, and it displaced this, let's just imagine okay, this was 100 meters that you've been applying this, then what you would do is you would just simply say that work and very often you might just simply write the W. Sometimes you might think of work and W, just be careful so you don't confuse it with weight. Um, but I will write W now here and in context, this would have been nothing else but simply 25 Newtons multiplied by the 100 meters that we have displaced this object. And therefore, if you would do that multiplication, you get 2,500 and notice the unit would have been Newton meters. So it's not very difficult to do that. And students will be like, okay, well, I guess this is not very hard for me to do. Now, there is a lot to work than just this, but this is on the introductory side, indeed true. So now first, what I would want to be able to kind of mention is indeed, we are assuming that we have both force and the displacement in exactly the same direction. Now, please don't forget that force and displacement are vectors and they may not always be in the same direction. And that will now complicate the whole idea of defining work for us, okay? But I'll point that out in just a moment. Now, some of the basic things that you should know on the introductory side with regards to this mechanical work is the following. So what is the unit? Well, so that's something that we should think about in here. So the unit, as you've noticed, is Newton meter. Now this Newton meter is basically nowadays designated just simply as a joule. So joule, which is J-O-U-L-E, or joules if it's multiple, is named after, okay, in the memory of the uh, scientist, okay, so joule who actually worked on this particular item and heat and conservation of energy. So this is the unit that we use, and this will be our SI standard unit that we have. There are other units that you may run into, but this is our standard. So Newton meter or simply joule, okay, those are exactly the same things. Now from this, 
Okay, so from this particular unit, we may ask a question. All right, so is work now a scalar or a vector? Well, if you multiply the actual force and you multiply the actual displacement, notice that we're multiplying simply the magnitudes of them, at least in this definition. But in reality, we know that force and displacement are vectors. So we're going to need a little bit more to this. But if we are assuming that they are actually just magnitudes being multiplied by each other, then there is really no direction here. And because of that, we actually do not think of work as a vector, but instead we think of work as a scalar. It is just simply a quantity that provides us a numerical value in the units of joules that just tells us how much force okay, we needed to exert to displace an object a certain amount of distance. That's all that work actually means. So now, if you're not gonna displace the object at all, so if the displacement is zero, and you're pushing on an object all you like, then by this actual definition of work and the multiplication, if displacement was zero, then your work would have been zero. So that's something that you think about because mechanical work is the work that is done on an object okay, that we have and it is dependent on the force that is being exerted over a certain amount of displacement that you have. So if the displacement zero, no work done. If there is no force done or if there's no force being applied in any way at all, so for example, if something is already moving and it's on a frictionless surface and we are neglecting air resistance and so on, not very kind of um, realistic for us, although in the school sense, sometimes we might do that. So if you're not gonna have any applied force, but you're still displacing a distance, there, the work done on that object would still be zero, okay? So that is something which is interesting for you to think about. So it is a scalar. Now we know the unit that we have. Now, so si some simple examples. Well, here's one simple example that I have just shown you. And that is nothing else but simply a force okay, that is being exerted over a displacement, which is one of the more common examples on the simple side. So now with this, of course, we can complicate this you know, quite a bit and we can start thinking about, OK, so you know, what other examples we might run into, at least if we're thinking where the force is being um, kind of in the same direction as the displacement. So I'll leave you off with one more example. So if we would have taken this particular object, so whatever object this would be, and I would have been displacing it. So one thing that you can think about is if you do have multiple forces, okay, in here. So let's say that you're applying a force and that particular force indeed. So we had that 25 Newtons, okay, that was being applied. But let's imagine that as you're sliding this across, maybe there is a force of friction and this force of friction, okay, maybe is 50 Newtons in here. And this would still be displaced. So if I would still have the displacement and let's imagine that it's still the same amount, which maybe is 100 meters. In order to find out what your work done in this case would be, you would need to find out what the net force is. And in this case, the net force, as you can see there, would have been 25 minus the 15. So that would have been just simply 10 Newtons that you would have had, and this is to the right, and your displacing, your displacement is also to the right. So you would have had that your work is nothing else but simply equal to 10 Newtons multiplied by 100 meters, and this would have been, in this case, 1,000, and I'll start writing joules here. So that's what you would have had. So one thing that you can keep in mind is that you're still gonna be doing the actual net force, right? Which is the summation of all the forces that you have. Now, all of this kind of is really nice for us as long, of course, as the force and the displacement are in the same direction. Now, the next item, okay, that you should start thinking about is, well, they're not always in the same direction and your actual force is not always actually directly, which is, you know, in this case, maybe horizontal. So maybe it's completely in different directions. So for instance, if we do have this particular object once again, and now you start saying that, okay, well, I do have this object. 
And now all of a sudden my forces, so maybe I'm still moving to the right, but the force that I apply, so let's say my net force, maybe is now at a, some particular angle, okay, as it moves along, okay, in this direction. So if this was my displacement, okay, over here, so from here to here, but now my force being applied is now at some particular angle. Now notice that your displacement and your force are not exactly in the same direction. And now this brings us to the true kind of definition of work. And for that, you actually need some new kind of mathematical item with regards to something called a dot product. And I'll put up a link up above there, okay, to kind of remind you. Now, for those students who maybe have done a little bit of vectors, maybe you've run into it. For those who haven't, okay, I would encourage you to take a look at it. You don't necessarily have to know the dot product directly because of the fact that in terms of the definition of the dot product between two particular vectors, Okay, it is that angle okay, that starts to bring us okay, into a new world where we have to now change the actual definition of work ever so slightly. Okay, and that is going to be presented in a different video, and I'll put up a link up above there for you. All right, so that is all that I have. And to leave you off, okay, I also will remind you that sometimes when you're watching, so this particular displacement, although I have been kind of more or less using always um, D, okay, for the position, okay, that we have, um, the delta D typically means the displacement, but please don't forget that as you get into physics, this can also be written with an S, okay, so that S, which is just a spatial movement between two particular points, okay, or as you know from mathematics, you can certainly use X, especially when you're referring to the x direction and sometimes you'll use delta y in the y direction instead of using your d. So be aware of that as you're kind of watching other videos, as you're studying concepts, okay, don't get thrown off okay, by these. All right, so that is it for the moment, okay, with regards to work. We'll see you in a future video. Bye everybody.